power of God. It's kind of hard to wrap around, to be honest. Well, it's impossible to wrap around, to be honest. Francis Chan, I, I like a lot of his writings and things that he says. And here's a little, a little paragraph from Francis. And he, he just speaks very, just, just right down to earth. It's just how he talks. But here's what he says about the power of God and reflecting on it. He says, look around you and see uh, how vast this universe is that God has made. God is truly powerful. The power of God is something, um, or, or rather, it is amazing. And it has always been a wonder for me. Often, I look at the clouds and the sky, and I am just amazed by God's power. You know, it is a good thing, I think, to just be quiet and look at the stars some night or to look at the clouds or just observe nature and just contemplate that God just spoke that into existence. And it's just mind-blowing. It's amazing. Job 26 contains some really cool statements about the power of God. And so I just kind of collected some of the statements about God's power from Job 26 and put them together, okay? Here's just some selected verses from Job 26. God stretches uh, the northern sky over empty space, and he hangs the earth on nothing. Now think about that. He hangs the earth on nothing. Have you ever seen a picture of the earth from outer space? It's an amazing thing to behold. It's just hanging out there. It's kind of mind-blowing. I'm a simple guy when it comes to all that. I'm just blown away by that. By the way, this was written thousands of years before any rocket went into space. And yet God's Word knew it. Isn't that cool? So he hangs the earth on nothing. Uh he wraps his rain in, in his thick clouds and the, and the clouds don't burst with the weight. He, uh, he covers the face of the moon, uh, shrouding it with his clouds. The foundations of the heavens tremble. They shudder at his rebuke. And those are just the beginning of all that he, ha or all that he does. Merely a whisper of his power who then can comprehend the thunder of his power so if I understand what Job's saying here he's saying if the cosmos everything we know as creation came into being when God whispered can you imagine what will happen when he thunders the power of God, friends. Crazy. Mind-blowing. And that's exactly what Paul gets at when he gets in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. I love this verse because it brings it right down. It takes all that vast power that we just are thinking about. And he brings it right down here to us as believers. And listen to what he says. Now to him, it's, it, this has another doxology after this verse because when Paul writes this verse, he just can't help but saying, praise be to God. But he, he starts off saying, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably, boy, that's a good word to underline, immeasurably more than all we could ask or even imagine. It's just beyond our ability to grasp. According to his power that is at work. And then a little phrase that blows my mind. Within <laughs> I just can't I can't even wrap around that it's so awesome when I understood this verse maybe it will happen for you today when I first really understood this verse I quit saying I can't I just quit I mean friends if that power is at work within me the power that whispered the universe into existence by his holy spirit dwelling in us who follow christ i get that god didn't wire me up or create me to do certain things he didn't gift me to play in the nba it's not that funny 
<laughs> yeah, I guess it really is. There's just, there's just no way, right? This, 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 this ain't going to happen there. And I get that. There's a lot of things that God didn't wire me up to do that you can do really well, far better than me, so many of you. But there is nothing God's word calls me to do and be faithful to him in that I can't do. And there's nothing that God calls you to do and to be obedient to in his word that you don't have the power to do by the power of his Holy Spirit living in you. This is the crux of Philippians 4.13, the most abused verse in the Bible, I think. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That don't apply to me ever having dreams to play in the NBA, right? I mean, you just get that. Not to beat that dead horse. But, but uh, you know what I mean. You, you can apply that and whip that out and say all kinds of things. What he's saying is there's nothing, there's no situation I'm going to find myself in as I follow Christ that Christ's power won't give me the ability to endure with joy. There's no struggle that I'll face that God's power won't be there for me every step of the way walking with me, enabling me. Even when they throw me in stockades, in prison, in in Philippi, I'll just start singing hymns to God. It's amazing. There's nothing we can't do. You see, God didn't call me to do the NBA thing or whatever, but God did call me to be a faithful dad, and I can do that. God called me to be a faithful husband, and I can do that. God called me to be a faithful pastor, and I can do that. God called you, if you're married, to be a faithful spouse, and you can do that. He's called you to be a witness for Him at work and in your neighborhood and in your family and shine for Him with your words and your actions and your attitude. And you can do that. You can live for Christ by the power that whispered the universe into existence because it lives in you. I mean, just ponder that today. Maybe you, you like me, will quit saying, I can't. I can through Christ.